Good evening, Hempfield. This is Pastor Doug with Hempfield Church of the Brethren. We are doing our midweek devotion tonight. So I welcome you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Savior. As we gather together in this way, I will mute my phone now. It was a beautiful day today. I hope you're able to get out and enjoy the sunshine. Uh, it looks like it's supposed to be up close to 70 tomorrow. Hope you're able to get outside tomorrow. This winter has been uh, dark and oppressive and depressive. And I am looking forward to warmer weather and spring. Hello, Deb. So as you sign on, say hello. Tell me something you're looking forward to as we're moving into a new season. Uh, tell me something fun you've done in the last week. We want to focus on where God is moving tonight, how we hear his voice, where we see him moving, where our focus is. It's important in the midst of all the noise to be still at some point and listen for God. Seek Christ. Follow after him. So we'll get started here in about 30 seconds. As you sign on, say hello. Uh, today was a good day. I uh, sat with our brother Josh and uh, talked to him about weddings and marriage. Um, a part of his role here. was able to meet with the staff yesterday with Emmy and Laura and hear from them. Hear what God lays on their heart when it comes to worship and how the children's ministry is doing upstairs. Hello, Bendits. Looking forward to planting our garden. We are as well. Jen, uh, Jen did some winter sewing, and uh, there's there's already stuff in our cold frame. She is she is on it. That's uh, just a small portion. But hey, the more of my backyard that becomes a garden, the less I have to mow, so I'm all for it. Let's just till the whole thing under and plant some corn or anything. Anything that I don't have to mow, I'm all for. So I want to welcome you tonight in the name of Christ. We'll pray here in a minute. And we're going to get started. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your spirit among us. For wherever two or three are gathered, there you are in our midst. And whether uh, when we're not able to be together physically, we can come to you in this way. Uh, as we gather, we pray that we you move among us, that we can let everything else uh, aside, and that we can be very attentive to your voice. You are a good shepherd, and we are your people. Speak to us now, and we lift this all to you in Christ's name. Amen. I think tonight I'll also close with a song, if, uh, if I can remember. Uh, one of the first songs Jen and I sang here was uh, Lay Em Down by Need to Breathe. So I'm, I've been singing that today, and I will we'll close with that. So this year, March 13th, we've, we've named this a couple times. March 13th is when, it, when we closed everything down here. Uh, the last time, uh, one of the last times we met last year was March 8th. We did not meet March 15th. Um, the staff here got a crash course on online uh, services and putting them together with iMovie and recording with our phones and our laptops. It's not always been the prettiest, but it's been worshipful, it's been sincere, and it's been heartfelt. It's been a, it's been an unusual year, and there uh, there was a lot of information going around last year. There was a lot of uh, fear, a lot of anxiety. We still see some of that, and it's okay. Uh, this year has been like no other in this generation, and by this generation, I mean everyone living. And so there's going to be time to adjust and we're going to need to give each other grace because different people are processing in different ways. For some people, they haven't left their house much or their apartment much in, in uh, the last year. 
For some, they've worked and lived just like they always have, and there hasn't been much change in their daily rhythms. But I think for all of us, there has been a shift in mindset, whether we have to wear masks uh, when we're with other people or while we're working. Uh, many of us work from home that we're able there have been different layers added to those who are not able to work from home. And uh, so we need to we need some grace. We need grace for one another. We need patience with one another. I like the way the King James uh, translates patience. They call it long suffering. Sometimes that's how it feels. And there are other things going on. There, there's been uh, swarms this uh, past year, I think in India or Africa, where they were having uh, locusts. Um, there have been uh, fires. There have been uh, natural disasters. There, there's been a lot of turmoil in our country uh, around race, around the election. And none of this is new for God. And I have found that in the midst of all the commotion, there are times we need to pause, look around, and listen. One of our sisters here, Linda, she posted a, a bud yesterday of a, of a sprout coming out of the ground, like a sign of spring. And it made me think, it made me think of Christ's voice. You know, sometimes we have to be still and look around and, and take our head out of the race, take our head out of the mess, and listen for his voice. It makes me think of Elijah when, when he goes to the, the, the mouth of the cave and there's a great storm and there's a great earthquake and he's listening for God's voice and God's voice wasn't there. And then there was a gentle breeze. And Elijah responded. Sometimes it's not in the noise and the commotion, it's in the stillness. And that makes me think of another passage back in Psalms. You know, a lot of us know Psalm 46, Be still and know that I am God. But I think, I think it's important to know the context that that verse falls in. Good evening, Bushongs. In Psalm 46, I want to read... I want to read up to verse 10, and then we'll read verse 10. It says, God is our refuge and our strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. You have earthquakes, you have natural disasters, the land going into the sea, the sea roaring and foaming. It says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. So in the midst of these natural disasters, here you have the city of God. It's, it's completely still. It's at peace, and God is in the midst of her. It says, the nations made an uproar, the kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, behold the works of the Lord who, who has wrought desolations to the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Wars, natural disasters, nations going against each other. In the NIV it says, Be still and know that, I'm in, and know that I am God. This is the NASB. It says, Cease striving. What would it be like to cease striving right now? And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. 
The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. In the midst of all the commotion, in the midst of wars and natural disasters, nations rising against each other, God says, cease striving. Be still and know that I am God. What would it look like right now to be still and hear from God? For some of us, uh, we continue to handwrite John. I know some of our members are writing 10 verses a day. Some are writing as they, as they go. Some are still buying books and they got different color pens so that they can, they can write it in a way that helps them remember. But they're taking the Gospel of John in one verse at a time, one word at a time. And they're seeing the stories that they may be familiar with, and they're seeing new things in those stories, and how they flow in and through the gospel, and how they connect. For some people, it's getting out into nature and, and going for a walk or a drive, and being, being in the midst of creation, all that God created and observing what they can see with their eyes and hear with their ears. You know, there's a lot of questions about the virus. There's a lot of questions about the vaccine. There's a lot of uh, doubt and mistrust around a lot of these things. And yet, God is in the midst of his people. There's no fear in love, as we read on Sunday. And it's interesting to me because Jesus told his disciples that they would they would live through tribulations. They would live, they would they would face trouble. And so when we when we look in John 16, you have this long this long discourse that Jesus is laying out for his disciples between uh, John 14 and John 17, after the after the 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 Last Supper as we know it, where Jesus washed his disciples' feet and they they broke bread and they drank wine, they fellowshiped together. He goes into this long discourse, and I'm going to read uh, chapter 16, 23 through 33. It says, In that day you will not question me about anything. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be full. Now this isn't like Santa Claus, God. We're not, we're not asking him for our, our wants and desires, but for Christ's will, for God's will in our life. He says, ask and, and it will be given to you. These things I have spoken to you in a figurative language. An hour is coming when I no longer will speak to you in figurative language, but will tell you plainly of the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will request the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from the Father. The word that comes forth from the uh, Father, does not return to him void. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. His disciples said, Lo, now you are speaking plainly and are not using a figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. By this we believe you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered, each to his own home and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Can we relate to this? I remember reading this passage back, I think I read this passage or a similar passage to it uh, in April last year. Scatter to our own homes. 
You know, there's an anxiety that we don't always realize we carry. The first time we come out of our homes and go into a store or go into a gathering, uh, we don't always know how to process seeing people in masks or maybe seeing people without masks. It's okay. God is with you. You don't have to be anxious about anything. He goes on to say, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. Peace is that wholeness, that everything is right, that you are right with God, and that you want to embrace your brothers and sisters around you. In the world you will have tribulation, you will have trouble, you will have trials, things outside of your control that you will face. But take courage, take heart. I have overcome the world. Church, do we believe this? Do we believe Jesus has overcome the world? Do we believe that there is a greater evil than, than the good that he has given us? He will give us his peace. He has overcome the world. He has overcome sin and death and the grave. There is nothing that we can face that he has not faced already. There is nothing that we can go through that he will not sustain us. He will, he will be with us to the end. And through the end. And we can rest in his Holy Spirit. And we can rest in the peace that he gives. A peace that the world cannot give nor can it take away. A peace that surpasses all understanding. And when we rest in that peace, when we cease striving, when we release our anxieties, then we can be still and look around and hear his voice. And like that sprout coming out of the ground, we can see what new thing he might be doing. All of the rhythms and all the patterns that we were used to, have a lot of them have been crushed, altered, moved. But God is still moving. He is still speaking. And He is doing new things. We need only be still and seek after Him. And like our friend who saw that sprout, we can begin to see what he's doing and come alongside him. So often I think the church wants to do a new thing, which is great, but we don't always ask God what he wants. And when we're still, and when we're attentive, and when we listen to him, he will do new things, things that we can't even imagine. And we will see his glory revealed. I look forward to this year. I look forward to the new things that God is doing. That Christ is already doing through his body. My prayer for you tonight is that we can all take a moment to cease striving. To release our ang anxious thoughts and our hurtful ways. And to know God to be attentive, to look for that sprout of growth and come alongside of it and use our gifts to strengthen his body. So tonight I want to end in a song. Um, it's Need to Breathe, uh, Come Down to the River. It's uh, Lay Him Down. Um, Jen and I sang this I don't know, maybe nine or ten years ago. And, uh... It's just a song of hope. And that's... That's what I'm resting in right now. Hope to see the glory of God revealed in new ways. Hope that His people are being attentive to His voice and hearing him speak through those around him. Hope that we can hold on to Jesus' promise. 
in this world you will face tribulation, you will face trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Alright, I'm going to sing. Come down to the river, come and let yourself in. Make good on a promise to never hurt again. If you're lost and lonely or broken down, bring all of your trouble and come lay them down. All you sinners and the weak at heart, all you helpless on the boulevard wherever you are now whatever evil you found bring all of your trouble and come lay them down we're all tied to the same old failing Finding shelter in things we know. We're all dirty like corrupted small towns. Bring our trouble, bring our trouble and come lay them down. All you rich men and the high above all those with and with our love all you burden broken down bring all of your troubles and come lay them down come lay them down Come lay them down, come lay them down. Come all you burden, you broken hearted. Bring all your troubles and lay them down. Come all you burden. You broken hearted, bring all your troubles and lay them down. Come lay them down, come lay them down, come lay them down. I hope you are blessed tonight. I hope you are a blessing. Cease striving. Be still. Be attentive to the shepherd's good voice. Look around you and see where the new life is coming. You will face trouble in this world. But fear not. Christ has overcome the world. And his Holy Spirit empowers you today. Go in his spirit and see new life come forth your brother in Christ. Amen.